Look, 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 look. Oh. Heads up. Oh. <laughs> how you doing? Hey, how are you? Hey. Bonjour! <laughs> Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Tony. And we're gonna show you today how to use OSD. Now, OSD is something that we don't commonly use in all our flying because frankly, we're not going too far. And when we crash, we know where it is because we're always flying from the same locations. But a lot of people travel, don't they? They do. And an easy OSD is an amazing insurance policy, but also it gives you a level of safety that you simply can't get without it. And uh, we're gonna talk about today. You have a product called the Easy OSD, don't you? That's right. What is that exactly? So the Easy OSD this is this block in here. Okay. Uh, we've got various connectors that are all plug and play to the rest of the system. We've got a current sensor here, which takes care of your battery level. That goes up to 100 amps, doesn't it? It goes up to 100 amps. That's pretty respectable. Um, we've got the uh, GPS on here. Okay. And we've got three buttons to set up the, uh, the OSD. Great. And one thing I like about this too is it also has a USB hub underneath it. That's that right. gives you the ability to do firmware upgrades. And you have an amazing firmware upgrade for uh, multi-rotors, don't you? That's, that's coming. It'll so be on our site soon. You can flash it. You can upgrade it. It's always updatable. It's always going to be relevant too. So if you have any bugs, any fixes, you're good to go. That's right. Now we're going to fly a wing. The flying wings is different from flying multi-rotors with OSD, isn't it? Different it benefits? Is. It is. Fantastic. Um, you need to set up something first though, don't you? Well, we need to set up. We've uh, we've upgraded the battery in this thing. Okay. And uh, we've got to go in there to the into the menus. Okay. And we've got to and change you have, the... You have just three buttons there, don't just you? Just three buttons. So okay. we can walk up through the menu. So we'll change this thing. We've got a basically a 6,000 milliamp hour pack in here. Okay. Which we just set. And now the OSD knows what size the battery is. And you're just ripping through this like crazy. What do these buttons do? Like, do you have like left, right, up, down? One enter? goes into a menu, one goes up and down. You select a field and then you just change the value. It's very simple. Very simple. And you can do that all the time. No menu required. Monitor or goggles, you're good to go. That's right. And speaking of goggles, I'm wearing the uh, Fat Shark Dominator version 2s. That's right. Standard definition. And you have the Dominator version 2s HD, high, right? These are the high definition. High right. definition. Pretty crazy. And this little guy, what is that? This is the uh, our patch. This okay. is a uh, 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, 13 dbi patch okay so what kind of uh direction does that give you it's got about a 35 degree um, so if you punch out a good distance you actually have quite a bit of flying range you get a few kilometers out of this that's pretty respectable <laughs> now you can see where we are we got a lot of beautiful range to cover and this is gonna be pretty cool i got the omnidirectional i want to see how far we get and now with the uh, osd on there i can see when it starts cutting out sounds good want to put it up in the air let's fly all right All right, I'm putting my goggles on now. It flies. So, looks like it's flying great. Now, what kind of wing is this? This is actually a Team Basement RC60. And they're out of Canada? They're out of Canada. They, uh, they're a great bunch of guys from uh, go to all the Canadian meets. Okay. And uh, this is their design. Fantastic. Which, uh, Man, a lot of fun. That scenery looks incredible. Now, one thing I noticed, we didn't have to hit any button to uh, to say where the starting point was. It was just gathering satellites as it was walking through. That's right. And does that lock in your uh, location? Uh, yep, as soon as it's got enough satellites to know where it is, it uh, remembers it. Nice, nice. Now I see uh, on the far left here, that's your speed, 51 kilometers That's per the hour. speed, yep. All right, distance. That's uh, the distance from the pilot. There's one in the middle and the top. And altitude, obviously, is your altitude, 81 meters. That's right. Now, normally we fly through GoPros, but we were talking about optimal and proper setups, and we'd be kind of schooled when we went here um, how many GoPro failures we've had. Now you're flying through a 600 TV line Fat Shark camera, right? That's right. This is, this is a Fat Shark uh, CMOS. Okay. Which is a cheap little camera. It's, it's got superb uh, performance. Yeah, it's doing amazing. And you also have a GoPro lens style that you can put on this as well. That's too. right. That's right. And one of the best things about this is you can operate this off of 5 volts. That means you can plug it right into your receiver. Yep. And when you have 12 volt cameras, the problem is, is if 12 volt gets closer to the end of its battery life, your camera's going to suffer in performance and you don't want that. Uh, Tony, when you're flying, uh, especially places that you haven't normally flown before, uh, what are the key things that you're looking information-wise and always monitoring? Well, the arrow home is always uh, extremely useful. Okay. And how does that work exactly? I see that it's pointing down back to the back and down and right. It always points to the pilot, so if we okay. uh, drop back here. So when theoretically the arrow is pointing straight up, you're heading straight home. That's right. That's pretty darn easy to use. That's the way we like these things. <laughs> Look at that. There's a river down Look here. Look at that river, yeah. I can't believe the vivid detail because when you're climbing, I can still see the ground. Are those emergent flags? It looks like it. That's hysterical. Absolutely gorgeous.
We got a little jello, don't we? Yeah, I think when we uh, when we launch, we got a folding prop. Okay. Wasn't exactly uh, that one. Ah. Oops. Let's see how it translates into the GoPro. Now we have a GoPro right next to this, so we can actually record this. It may be a little jelly, but still, the experience is amazing. Oh yeah. One thing I like about your Easy OSD is a lot of OSDs have things like bankles. Whoa! Hey, that was an immersion RC flag, man. That was. <laughs> I can stay up here all day. This is this is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. I can't believe the amount of land you're covering, and it's still so solid. I'm going up a location that you're not normal normally used to. This is where it's going to be really, really crucial to have something like OSD. Uh, we always fly in our backyard. We know it really well because we fly it every single day. Uh, but in this case, um, some of these areas aren't going to be too easily reachable, and knowing where you are and and how far away from you uh, you are. Uh, gives you a good sense of how to get home quickly. So if you get lost in the moment, which is so easy with beautiful landscape like this, you know immediately, okay, I gotta turn that arrow straight up to get back home. And uh, and you can do that. And also if you have a video failure or something, you can also uh, uh, still read that. And that, that's really important too. This was no, oh, I just lost video. Where is it, where is it? Can anyone see it? I can't see it, I can't see it. I can't see it. Where'd it go? Video just just disappeared. Yeah, Where just you just. You went behind the mountain. You see that the crack here, sir? Yeah. You went behind that ridge. Oh, and no one screamed before I lost video. <laughs> we can walk up there if we want to. Can we? Yeah, it's not too far. Climb every mountain. <laughs> Ask these guys to find it for you. <laughs> I wonder if they can get it for us. <laughs> look! 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 look. Oh. Heads up. Oh. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, how are you? Bonjour! <laughs> Get back, man. <laughs> All right, start to walk of shame. We got Brian, we got uh, Sander, and who else? Adrian. And we got Adrian, Z Flyboy. And they're walking up, and they are literally three tiny specks going up that whole hill there. And this is Jan, and he's flying the Shugan version too. And you actually have a telemetry built into this board right here, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the second version of our famous foldable quadcopter. Yes. And uh, he also have the Easy OSD built in. Okay. So it's an all-in-one board, really, really powerful. Now the cool thing about that is he's taking this to a dongle right here to his iPhone. And what that's going to give him the ability is we're going to actually be able to live track. So you're going to go look for it. Yeah. And the second we see it, we'll know exactly where it is through a dongle on the iPhone. Yeah, exactly communicating straight from your goggles, right? Yeah. That's pretty crazy cool. All right, I'll, I'll let you do it, man. Hello. I mean, you're making no time getting over there. We're looking, don't see anything yet. He has, uh, I can see where it says his minutes as well too. He has his RSS high speed, which is his uh, signal strength, but also how many more minutes of flight he has. That's not it there on the right, is it? It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, go back, go left, go oh, left. Oh, no, I thought I meant straight down. Left, no left, go left. Up a bit. There, top yeah. left. Top left, oh, yeah, you're in the middle now. Um, is that just snow? No. There it is! Yes. They found That's it. it. You know what, it doesn't matter how much you fly, weird things happen, and also, even pros make mistakes, right? We so did. We had some, some wobbly image. What was caused by that? I think what we did, we, we kind of built this wing in a bit of a rush. Okay. And uh, we didn't, we, we left the 5.8 gate transmitter kind of loose within the hole here. Okay. And the antenna vibrated off, the SMA yeah. connector vibrated off. Yeah, and, and you know, here's the crazy thing is, is we always talk about balancing prop, how important it is. That's probably what caused this thing to continue to vibrate because we have a lock steady, rock solid signal, yeah. even from the omnidirectional. But what you did with this here is you actually tighten this up so it wouldn't Yeah, wouldn't we, fly we, had, out, right? we had a lot of vibration there. Yeah, so this caused the vibration, caused this to go unscrewed the rest of the way. Moral of the story is, 
is balance your props, get everything running smooth, tried and true, and you don't lose video signal into a snow-covered mountain. We did learn something very important though. What's that? Flying a white plane on a snow-covered mountain yeah. is not a good idea. Well, you know what? Do you want to put your shoe gun up and look sure. at the easy telemetry? Why not? Awesome. Oh, now, one thing I noticed immediately is you have a lot more data on this than the uh, than the wing. You got your RSSI voltage, uh, you got your uh, your uh, minutes flown versus how many minutes you have on the battery pack, is that correct? We do. We have an interesting number down to the left, which is the uh, what we call the milliamp, milliamp hours per minute. Okay. Which lets you uh, estimate how far you can fly. And then on the right, we take that data and we show uh, how long the, the flight can be with this pack. So this kind of flying. if you're flying really aggressive, the number on the far right of that will be going down. That's right. And then your total flight time is counting up constantly just to the left of that. That's right. And that gives you the ability then to say, okay, yeah, I got a, a 12 minute flight time right now and I've used a lot of it, but if you're flying aggressively and it goes down, you know you need to get home because you may have a minute or so at that style of flight. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty cool. Now one thing is, is it was really deceiving um, is how easily you can get lost. You think with the distinctive mountains all around here, you wouldn't get lost, but you do. Very easily. Yeah, if, if you didn't have that arrow there, um, when you turned around, it all looks the same. It's windy, it's roads going everywhere, um, it's mountains. Uh, it's very easy to use your ori lose your orientation, but all you need to do is make the arrow point straight up. That's right, let's try that. Awesome. Spin it around. Look at that. Are those uh, old ruins of old buildings there? Oh yeah. Wow. Now what you don't want to do is what, what happened before, right? Fly also behind the other mountains. But we'll try not to do that again. Yeah. Look at that. Now the important thing here is you just simply need to trust your system, right? At this point, yeah. Yeah. And you're flying a DJ NASA in this, right? So you have an Addy mode? That's right. GPS mode? Yep. This and is in GPS mode right so now. So does it do altitude lock for you as well? Yes. Nice. Yeah, now what would you do in a system like this if, if you start losing signal? Do you put it in loiter mode and let it hover until you can re-establish connection? With the NASA, yeah. The, the uh, easy UHF will go into fail-safe mode. Okay. The, the NASA will pick that up uh, and it'll, it'll bring it home. An easy UHF is pretty easy to uh, set failsafe on, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's just a single button on the back of the transmitter. Nice, and you set your transmitter to where you want it, hit the button and it locks it in? Exactly. So in this case you'd lock it into, uh, what would that be, stable mode? Yep, stable yeah, you mode. lock it in, you've, you've taught the uh, the NASA what the failsafe is. That's nice. That's a lot more difficult than a lot of other systems. Yep. Look at you just tracing that terrain. Unreal. Now I can see your eye is just jumping all over the place. Um, a lot of times it's close to uh, to 100. Yeah, on the left is is, is the RSSI for each antenna. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, this is kind of beta firmware. This this would normally be smoothed, be a lot cleaner. Nice, pretty amazing. So we're actually flying a prototype, aren't we? That's right. This but is going to be going into production soon, but right now it's already in production. We've uh, we've given them the PO and they started milling these uh, these new arms. Fantastic. Now, in a system like this, you know, sometimes you're flying from the GoPro and sometimes they fail on you. Would you be able to still use this data to be able to fly home? Oh, certainly. So you'd say that OSD is, is every bit, if not more important, probably on multi-rotors because if a plane, oh, you yeah. run out of battery, you glide down. Absolutely. But on a multi-rotor yeah, yeah. you run out, you're going to tumble down. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. And another thing with multi-rotors, where planes follow trajectory so you can trace terrain and everything and you know generally which direction you're going, a little bit of a bump on the control sticks can change the direction immediately on a multi-rotor. That's right. Nice. There we go. Good Safe job, man. <laughs> they were happy about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, did they have faith in you or something? I saw, you know, I saw them changing money up there. <laughs> Friends, we want to say thank you for watching. Uh, we strongly recommend if you're going to be flying in areas that are unfamiliar to you, uh, by all means, look into OSD, on-screen display. The Easy OSD is phenomenal. It gives you all the basic uh, information that you need to be able to get back home safely, protect your investment, and especially if you're flying multi-rotors, it's almost a must. Knowing how much voltage you have left, knowing how to get home quickly, is, uh, is not only safe, but it protects your investment, which oftentimes can go up to be a very, very expensive one. So, uh, all right, we want to thank Immersion RC for bringing us out to France here. This is beautiful. Where are we? We're near uh, Roselands in uh, Beaufortain Valley. Beaufortain in the uh, middle of France. This is God's country, friends. This is absolutely beautiful. It's breathtaking. And uh, to fly over it and see it from that perspective, FPV heaven. what a blessing, yes. Well, you want to put another battery into it? Let's do it. All right, man. See you next time. <laughs>